Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at GTA 6. This is Grand Theft Auto 6. The trailer has been incredibly successful so far. And to be honest, it hasn't made a huge difference in the company's share price. It hasn't. But what has made a huge difference was the build-up, the anticipation, the months of waiting. We knew this trailer was coming in early December. There's been rumors, there have been leaks. Earlier this year, there were some major leaks. We all remember those major leaks about the Grand Theft Auto 6 game. It was, it was met with some positive inputs and some negative inputs as well. But now we've actually got the trailer. And I'd like to just play that trailer and just talk about what the company is doing so far. So we know that they've been hugely successful with the Rockstar game so far. That includes Red Dead Redemption and that includes the Grand Theft Auto series. You know, especially the Grand Theft Auto 5 game. That was hugely successful. And it's been continually successful for the company so far. And I do believe that obvious, obviously it's, it's been slowing down. But it keeps on selling at incredible rates. You know, for, for the game industry, this is the equivalent to Harry Potter books. Despite how long it's been, the, the, the games keep selling. So the company is incredibly successful. And the company Take-Two, they don't have a lot of titles. But, they, but the titles that they do have are really strong, such as Grand Theft Auto, such as 2K, such as Red Dead Redemption, and they have a few other titles. Recently, they bought Zynga Games. That's like a mobile game developer. They've developed poker games on, for your mobile phone, iOS, Android. That's been hugely successful in the mobile gaming space. And they will continue to create more games that are similar to Red Dead Redemption or Grand Theft Auto, but had, had a different twist, with a different lifestyle, with a different gaming experience. And it, and it will only continue to grow. So I must say, I love the trailer so far. One of my favorite shots in the trailer was when we get all the cars, the best cars in the world. We got, we got a blue Porsche. Let's just, let's just go back just a little bit. We got a blue Porsche, white Ferrari, Dodge Charger. We've got a Mercedes, white Mercedes, um, Corvette. We've got a red Ferrari. But the kicker, the surprise, is the Lamborghini that comes out of nowhere. That green car in the left-hand side, that baby, that's a Lamborghini. Come on, let's be honest. And the thing about the cars for this year... The more games that they make is the more realistic the cars look. They, the cars are starting to look almost exactly like the real-life counterpart. Now, I don't know if they'll have any legal issues with that. But personally, I don't think so. You know, GT has been doing this for quite some time. I think they're experts at this. But the cars do look extremely close to the real-life counterpart, such as that green, green Lamborghini. It's a little bit more tight. The green Lamborghini is a little bit more tight in all the corners, so it doesn't look like a true Lamborghini. But that's the point. It's a, it's a counterfeit. But nevertheless, fantastic. So they're bringing back the game to Miami. But to be honest, I want to talk about more. I don't just want to talk about the game. I want to talk about the company. Over here on this channel, we talk about investing. And this is not financial advice. It's just for entertainment as the game. But listen, we've got some real things to talk about. I've been looking at Take Two. Like I said, recently they did buy Zinger Games, which I think was a big player's move. That was a big player's move, and I think that's going to impact them in a huge way. Like I said, when the trailer dropped, we didn't see anything, anything major. But if you look back at the last three months, what we did see was a huge swing in the, in the share price, going from as low as $130 to as high as $158. So the build-up to the trailer is what really drove the impact in the share price. And analysts like seeing this. You know, the public love to see the positivity. Although we all know that the more the share price goes up, is the more expensive the company becomes to buy. Market cap is at $26 billion. But let's look at the earnings. Have the earnings been increasing? And I'm happy to say they have. Let's compare the earnings from when the game initially launched. For 2013, now these are some yearly results and some quarterly results as well. So if we look at the, at the start of 2013, first quarter... Generated 299 million. Second quarter, 142 million. Third quarter, 148 million. Here's the kicker. The last quarter of 2013 generated 1.86 billion. That's, that's GTA. I believe this was around the time that GTA launched back in 2013. Can we expect something similar? Now, 2018 times, turns out the company was doing incredibly well with 125 billion. That was the last quarter of 2018 as well. So what happened in 2018, late 2018? Let's look back. 
So you can see, late 2013, that's when GTA 5 was released. That's what had the huge impact in the, in the company's earnings for that quarter. So let's look at 2018. Red Dead Redemption 2. Red, De Red Dead Redemption 2 was released in 2018, late 2018. So every time this company released a new game, it has a huge spike in earnings for that quarter. And it's always over a billion. With Red Dead Redemption 2, it was 1.25 billion. For GTA 5, it was 1.86 billion. But nevertheless, even, even throughout those times, even around 2018, quarterly, they were generating 400, they were generating 539 million, 540 million. Now this company is regularly generating 1 billion plus per quarter. In fact, early this year, they generated 1.4 billion plus just, just a quarter, just for this year. That's more than they generated in the last quarter of 2018 for the new game of Red, Red, Red Dead Redemption. That's a tongue twister. So this company is now regularly generating 1 billion plus, sometimes far surpassing 1 billion. And they do have a lot of titles. Something that I'm concerned about is the cash flow. The cash flow used to be very strong, especially 2018, 2020, 2019. Those times the cash flow was a lot more strong, as you can see. But all throughout, there have always been a lot of inconsistencies, especially since around 2003, 2005, 2009. There have been inconsistencies. And especially recently in 2021, there have been inconsistencies in the cash flow. But for the majority of time, they're, cl they're cash flow positive. They're a company that is making a lot of profit majority of the time. Net profits have been down recently in the last couple of years. 2020, 2022, 2023, net profit has been down. And in the same time period, the, the debt have been driven up by a lot more. As you can see, this is cash compared to debt. And there's, what's really interesting is that around 2017, the company was doing great relative to, to debt control. They were managing their debt exceptionally well up until the start or the middle of 2022. And since, since, the, since the third quarter of 2022, the debt has risen by an exceptional rate. So is this any concern for investors? Potentially, yes, because here's why. The cash has been going down. Cash on hand has been going down. Debt has been rising. Now, to be honest, that does take a lot more research to fully understand what's going on. Now, how about earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization? That's been looking good substantially, except for this quarter, or at least the last quarter. There's a huge dip. There's a huge dip for the last quarter of this year. To be honest, majority of the time they do well, especially, 20, especially when GTA 5 came out. So I don't expect them to be low on this in this area, to be honest. This is a well-run business. It is a good business. It's a very fair business at a fair price. So I got a really good article to explain more about what's going on with the company recently. And they start with a quote from Warren Buffett. Quote by Warren Buffett. Volatility is far from synonymous with risk. When we think about how risky a company is, we always like to look at how it used debt, since debt overloads can lead to ruin. We can see that Take-Two Interactive Software does use debt in its business, but the real question is whether is debt making the business risky? So when is debt a problem? Debt and other liabilities become risky for a business when it cannot easily fulfill those obligations, either with free cash flow or by raising capital at an attractive price. In the worst case scenario, a company can go bankrupt if they cannot pay their creditors. While that is not too common, we often do see indebted companies permanently diluting shareholders because lenders force them to raise capital at a distressed price. Having said that, the most common situation is where a company manages its debt reasonably well and its own advantage. When we examine debt levels, we first consider both cash and debt levels together. So what is take to interactive software debt? As you can see below, Take-Two of Interactive has $3 billion in debt by June 2023, down from $3.29 billion a previous year. However, it also has $885 million in cash, and so its net debt is $2.19 billion because it could cover some of the debt with the money it has on hand. How healthy is the Take-Two Interactive software balance sheet? We can see from the most recent balance sheet that Take-Two Interactive had liabilities of $2.7 billion. 
fallen due to within a year, a liability of $3.85 billion beyond that. Now, we know how much cash it has so far. So its liabilities outweigh the sum of cash that we know. They have more liability than they do, than they do cash. So while this might seem a lot, it is not so bad since Take-Two Interactive Software has huge market capitalization of, of $23.9 billion. It is more by now, actually. And it could probably strengthen its balance sheet by raising capital if it needs. But we definitely want to keep an eye out for indications that its debt is bringing too much risk. The balance sheet is clearly an area to focus on when you're analyzing debt. So if you're focused on the future where you can check out this free report showing analysis profit forecast, this is take two. And this is some more information on the company up on the forecast, of course. So right now you can see they are in debt. The plan is to get out of debt as they continue. The game is due to release in 2025. And it looks like that game, GTA 6, will be the main savior of the company to help it get out of a lot of the debt it's currently in. I've showed you, every time they release a new game, it sells like crazy. And GTA 6 will sell even more insanely. I cannot describe it. So what do you think? Do you think I'm right? Is the GTA 6 game here to save the company from too much debt? But it's also perfect timing for the company to make a new game, to make a new GTA game. It's been over a decade. And there's so many things that have changed in the world in the last 10, 11, 15 years. So many things that will be different in this game. I've downloaded the new G I've downloaded GTA 5 once again, and I'm going to play that game once again because I've missed it. And I've just remembered how nice it was to play that game. Now, just before I end this video, always keep in mind that since the revenue is rising, this company can regularly generate over 1.2, 1.3 billion per quarter consistently now it wasn't doing that three four five years ago perhaps three but probably four years five years ago it definitely wasn't doing that so this is a company that can probably manage their debt a lot better than we give them credit one other thing i'd like to focus on before i ended this video is the outstanding shares the outstanding shares have been rising to be honest you can see since 2012, it has been rising. It used to be below 100 million. Now the share outstanding is consistently above 169 billion. You can see that now the shares outstanding is consistently over 168 million. That's not a lot of shares. So for the, for the price, consider the price of this company. A lot of companies out there, they have a billion in share outstanding. This company's share outstanding is actually very low. The market cap is a bit high. Some people would say this company is overvalued. And to a certain extent, you could say that. But you cannot deny it is very good at generating profit. It is very good at launching new games and making it profitable. And the price used to be a lot higher for this game, especially at the start of 2021. Share price used to be a lot higher, almost $200 per share, over $200 in fact. $213 per share at the highest. So if you think it's undervalued now, it used to be way more undervalued. But I do think it might be a little bit undervalued. But what I do like to see is that the shares outstanding is very low. It's low. It's less than $200 million in shares outstanding. The reason I talk about this as is a big deal for shares to be this low is because the price, some might say the price is quite high. The price is only high because the shares are very low. There's few shares. Rarity create value. That's what you're seeing here. They're probably not going to split their... They want to keep the share price around where it is. Probably even a little bit cheaper. Kind of like what Apple does. Apple likes to keep a share price around $100, $125, $150. As soon as it's getting close to $200, they're considering splitting shares. Apple is always considering multiplying shares to keep the share price down, to keep it attractive. Take-Two is doing something very similar. But the difference is Apple has billions of shares. Take-Two... For the company that it is, it has a very low amount of shares. So this con so while the company might seem expensive because it's a $153 per share, it's actually not that expensive. Because if they were to 10x the share supply, let's say it's 170 million times that by 10, if they split the shares, it would be 1.7 billion in shares outstanding. I'm just giving an example. If we take the price of the company and divide it by 10, the share price would be would be $15.30. So keep that in mind. This company is not as cheap as it this company is not as expensive as it seems. 
it might actually be a very cheap company because if you split the shares, the share price is $15. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.